I've not got much to show you this week, unless you all want to look at a mess. <laughs> Yeah, so this one's uh, this one's a difficult one. I don't think I got much content. I'm filming this before I've edited, so um, I think we're gonna look at some electrical stuff, um, some oil stuff, and see where it goes. I'm 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 all on odd jobs now. So unless you really want to watch me uh, do every little thing, then I'm a bit stuck for content. <laughs> Just cracking on. Anyway. Show you what I've done with the wiring first, and then I think we'll move on to the other stuff. So I've been a busy boy. This all looks much neater now. Um, OCD trigger warning, by the way. I have red um, electrical tip because I ran out of black. <laughs> I used all the black in there somewhere. Anyway, we've got the um, the mess that was here going into the car has now all gone. We've got one nice neat plug and play uh, loom. That goes into this um, goes into this box that covers stuff like the tachometer and the speedo and all that. Even though that's probably not going to work first as last. And then we've still got this plug then, which plugs into the engine up here. So that's the same one as I had previously, but now it's a bit shorter, so it's not in the way. While we're on the engine, oh by the way, look at the mess. <laughs> This is what happens when you start wiring. Something else I've done was shorten the lambda cables. Didn't need to be that long. I'm gonna to have to tape all this up and make a new support for this. Is it in frame? Yes, it is. And something else then, I've mounted this lambda plug here and also put a reversing switch in because I found the cables in the car that I needed to put the reversing switch in. So that goes through that plug also. So that's pretty much the engine all wired up, I think. I don't think there's anything else to go on here. I got my two big cables, starter and um, alternator. Uh, it needs one big earth, that's it. I need to put an earth on the back of the head to the car, which I'm going to probably weld something on around this area, or I may even use one of these boxes. Depends how good that is as an earth. I've also made a mark in the um, starter cable right about there when the engine was back in so I know I need to cut it there and that's what I'm going to do now while it's out. I'm going to give myself a bit, always give yourself a bit and too late now. Handy dandy earth cable, which I'm going to need. But now I can uh, strip the ends of this and put a crimp on the end so it can be crimped into the car. Where's my knife? You call that a knife? This is a knife. That's not a knife, that's a spoon. All right, all right, you win. <laughs> I see you've plied knifey spoony before. I believe this is the biggest crimp I've got. So it's just gonna have to fit. does fit. Should have cut a few of the stragglers. <laughs> this is probably it. That's better. Get some heat shrink on that. While I'm here, I'll show you the touch lines. So this sits there somewhere and plugs into the clutch to 
give the clutch some fluid, also plugs into the brakes, which is there. So that keeps that nice and tidily out of the way. And then from the clutch, we have a hydraulic line that uh, I've had one made up to fit some random um, fit in. I think it's UNF. And a banjo bolt, which is on the um, slave cylinder on the gearbox. I messed up a bit. If we put this in here, that fits almost perfect there. But because I had trouble um, flaring this pipe, I put this mount in the wrong place. So I need to get this properly flared by someone who has a better machine than mine. And then that rubber mount can be held there. And that goes onto the gearbox. And we're all good, we'll have a clutch line. I think that's pretty much everything on the firewall now, apart from the aircon, but I'm not putting the aircon in for now. That's for the next time the engine comes up. <laughs> Just for reference on the gearbox, this is where the slave cylinder is, and then we've got this uh, little banjo bolt that just sticks into the um, that pipe just sticks into there, and hopefully it'll bleed up fine with the bleed nipple. We'll see. I'm not entirely happy about this hanging here, but I'm not sure what else I can do to be honest. I'm stuck for space. We'll see. We'll drill these holes out to put some um, nuts in and then I can put the 3D printed block that holds the power steering pipe in. So, oh, dropped it. Drill these up. Okay, that works. <laughs> So a little bit about the 3D printing, this is uh, quite brittle, as you can see it's already chipped off. I don't think this is going to last very long, but you can get different types of resins to um, to print with. So I might print another one of these off in a more flexible um, resin. We'll see, see how well this uh, holds up to the test of time. Considering how well that last one went, I'm also going to put a rib nut here. Uh. Awesome! My new favourite tool. So, I want to show you around the oil system on this car. Um, sorry about the light, it's very poor down here. I don't know if... Uh, so if you can see everything but basically this is the oil filter and it's got like a relocation housing to it so it just puts it under the um, air conditioner pump and then it normally has a uh, oil cooler or, or a cooler sort of thing on it that goes up to that hole that I closed off a couple of weeks ago so I've got rid of that and I've just bought a, a fit in that the oil filter should just slip onto oh oh it's wobbling yes it does so that tightens up nicely and then I've got to get oil to the turbos I've got this mess down here so I think this is um, 3 8 BSP this lighting is terrible that better so we've got um, 3 8 BSP I can't remember if it's tapered or not um, extension into a crucifix so I can have one oil feed coming off for this side and another oil feed coming off for that side with a 90 on that one to get it to run through the tightest gap in the world and then another 90 on here then for the oil pressure sensor which is um, quite important this pipe then runs up through the gap 
into the top of the turbo to feed this one with oil. That's feed number one. Feed number two goes under here and I will put a bracket here to um, to keep it there but it comes all the way out here <laughs> to fit on top because that's the only place it'll go in the car. It won't fit in between this gap because you can't get fit into the bend enough or so my local pipe place tell me. So that's the oil feeds to the turbos pretty much sorted they just need to be um, tidied up a bit and, and stop them rattling and shaking about. On to the returns. So the return on this side is easy you just go into this big hole here which is the oil level sensor which I'm just doing away with. So to get down there this comes off just for demonstration purposes. I bent a bit of pipe uh, made a flange, welded the pipe to the flange and I just put a little bend in it. I probably put a beater welder on there as well to make sure it, uh, the flexible pipe can be clamped on. And basically that fits in between the um, manifold branches. So that goes in there like that. Gently, gently. And then, and no in there. And then we basically just get a soft flexi going into, whoa, this hole, um, which would be easy. However, I have a turbo on two sides. That's where the issue lies. So the turbo on this side, again, nice and easy. Got a flange, made a pipe up, bent it to some kind of shape. And this one actually came off the Volvo turbos, so it already had a bead of thing on the end of it. So that just needs a bit of rubber hose on it, a bit like this. And that goes into absolutely nothing. So, what I've done, and I really don't think this is going to work, but I can only try it, and cry if it fails, is made this. <laughs> this is a cross piece, which goes from under here, so we can get a... Um, so we can get a rubber pipe onto the top of this, there, that then runs around the front of the engine, round here, always on a downward slope, into the big hole on the other side. So they both meet here in some sort of T-piece, going into the sump that side. So my main concern with that is on a sharp right hand corner, all the oil is going to want to go that way, which is away from that I say a sharp a long drawn out right hand corner so how often do you do that roundabouts in the UK <laughs> who knows I'll try it if it doesn't work then I'm gonna have to come up with some other solution but the current solution is this that I turned on the lathe it's got a, a, a place for an o-ring that that fits directly in there so this should just go plonk in there like that and now I can put my pipes on here to feed into the sump from both turbos. Fingers crossed that works. But before that works I need to put some holes in this that um, correlate with the holes in there. So what I've done is put a bit of um, masking tape over the gap and put some dirty fingers over it. So there's the shape. Hopefully now that will just go straight on there and I can punch the holes where I need them.
So in the interest of giving you as much content as I can as soon as possible, I'm going to leave it there, even though I well and truly messed that up. <laughs> I might make a new one, or I may try and salvage this. I think I may be able to salvage it, but I don't know. This little, uh, this little ridge was difficult to make on the lid, but I've done it once. I can do it again. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, I'm nearly there now. This is ready to go back in pretty much and, and, and be started. This is still hot. Yeah, so this is ready to go back in. Uh, hopefully start it up fairly soon. Just got a couple of pipes that I need to get made uh, by a local company. They're going to do some swaging for me because I just don't have the tools and I'm not willing to pay a couple of grand to get the tools. <laughs> So yeah, we're really close, and and that that's the motivation for me to come out here these days and um and, and try and get this up and running. Lots of little jobs to do, and I I I I find it difficult to film them. So if you want me to film them and I and you want to watch every single little job, I will. But it's gonna get tedious. You don't want to see me cutting every cable, do you? Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for coming and watching. Bit of an odd one, I know. Sorry. Please like, subscribe, and just come back. We're over 500 subscribers now, by the way, so uh, thanks, everybody. Nice one. Um, yeah, appreciate you all coming back and watching. Ciao.